The Nexus 5 and the OnePlus One, two of the most highly anticipated budget smartphones of 2013 and 2014. With the Nexus 5 being the most popular, let's see how these two stack up and compare against each other. Let's start with the design. On the top of the Nexus 5, you're going to find a circular earpiece with a 1.3 megapixel camera and a proximity sensor. Moving on to the OnePlus One, you're going to find a long gated earpiece with a 5 megapixel camera, an LED notification light, with a proximity sensor as well. Both phones also feature an ambient light sensor. Both phones also have very large screens with the OnePlus One towering over the Nexus 5 with its 5.5 inch screen. Meanwhile, the Nexus 5 sports a five inch screen. Moving on to the bottom of these phones, you're gonna notice that the OnePlus One has physical capacitive buttons. Meanwhile, the Nexus 5 has on-screen buttons, but the OnePlus One has a trick up the sleeve and you can turn off the physical capacitive buttons and use on-screen buttons. These are also fully customizable, which is a key to Cyanogen Mod 11S, is customization. We'll get more into that later. Moving on to the very bottom, you can see both sport micro USB charging ports, and you can see some speaker and microphone grills there as well. A quick look at the side here, you can see they sport similar curves, and you can see that screen on the OnePlus One that isn't really connected by any bezels. It's just a floating screen. It's a very unique feature. In case you didn't see my Oppo Find 7A vs. the OnePlus One video, one of the things I talked about was the volume up and down and power button layout, how they're different. I prefer the OnePlus One. Well, the Google Nexus 5 and the OnePlus One have that same layout, featuring the power button on the right and the volume rocker on the left. And I prefer this. They are also the same kind of ceramic buttons, so you're going to have that same kind of feel. The only difference is the volume up and down and power button are slightly higher on the Nexus 5, but considering it's a smaller phone, it kind of makes up the difference. Moving on to the top, you can see the 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks as well as microphones there on the top. The headphone jacks are on opposite sides, so it's a little bit different there. On the back, you have the Nexus branding as well as the OnePlus branding with their dedicated cameras and their flashes. You can see there's a dual LED flash on the OnePlus One, while the Nexus 5 retains a single flash. There's no way around it. The OnePlus One is a very large phone. In fact, it's larger than the Galaxy Note series and it's larger than the HTC One M8. So it's going to be considered your basic phablet. So when it comes to one-handed use, it's going to be incredibly hard to use this phone without shimmying up and down the sides to access the volume rocker, the power button, to even get to the pull down notification bar. To reach the screen diagonally, it's much harder, which is why I give the edge to the Nexus 5 when it comes to one-handed use and portability. When it comes to screens, neither phone is going to disappoint, and that's thanks to their IPS displays. As you previously saw, that was with the brightness turned all the way up, and daylight visibility is excellent. When it comes to colors though, colors look a little bit better on the Nexus 5, and that is because it's almost more like an AMOLED display, even though it's still considered an IPS display. But whites are much better on the OnePlus One versus the Nexus 5. Both feature LCD displays, while the OnePlus One features touch on lens display. The Nexus 5 has a pixel density of 445, while the larger screen on the OnePlus One features a pixel density of 401. Angle viewing is wonderful on both phones and you won't have a problem there, although the Nexus 5 features better whites at angled viewing. The OnePlus One featured a severe call quality bug that affected the speaker when making and placing phone calls. Thanks to the most recent update, they have squashed that bug and now call quality is wonderful with the OnePlus One. But compared to the Nexus 5, I do like phone calls better on the Nexus 5 despite its smaller speaker. Nevertheless, both phones do have great call quality even when it comes to speaker phones. But when it comes to speaker phones, I give the edge to the OnePlus One because it has the dual stereo speakers. Meanwhile, the Nexus 5 has a single speaker. Don't let the speakers on the bottom fool you. The Nexus 5 has one microphone and one speaker on the bottom. Here's a quick test.
And as you could hear, the OnePlus One definitely overpowers the Nexus 5 when it comes to speaker quality. Now, in my first impressions with the OnePlus One, I noted that I had some Wi-Fi and cellular connectivity issues. Well, that is no longer the case, and I'm going to go ahead and run a Wi-Fi test. Both phones are on the same network, which has fixed the potholes, as you previously saw, and we're going to load up the speed test app. It's also very important to note that the results are going to be a little bit different because you're not supposed to run both phones at the same time due to inconsistent speeds and frequency use because when you hit the button, a little bit's going to go to one phone while the other phone may get a little bit more. So it's best to actually perform this test one phone at a time. But I'm just going to go ahead and run them both at the same time and you can see the results right here. So when it comes to download speeds, you can see there's hardly a difference, maybe seven megabytes per second, but that's hardly significant enough to say that there's any errors with one phone or the other. And when it comes to upload speeds, they're almost dead on and exactly the same. Similar results can be expected on a LTE test as well. So let's talk about the internals of these phones. The Nexus 5 features a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor with the Adreno 330 and two gigabytes of RAM. It also has wireless charging and NFC. And you can see the OnePlus One definitely beats the Nexus 5 when it comes to the Manhattan and T-Rex test. And that is due to the quad-core 2.5 gigahertz Snapdragon 801 with the Adreno 330, three gigabytes of RAM, and it does feature replaceable backplates. And it also has NFC. When it comes to gameplay and just the overall multimedia experience, you're not going to go wrong with either phone. It's just basically going to be personal preference or whether or not you want a larger display. Gaming on the Nexus 5 was excellent. I experienced no lag whatsoever. And in fact, the display is beautiful regardless of size. Touchscreen sensitivity and responsiveness is also excellent. And I have no complaints whatsoever with the multimedia experience from the Nexus 5. And despite it being relatively a year older than the OnePlus One, it keeps up when it comes to performance. The OnePlus One, on the other hand, has the top end specs, so you're gonna experience smooth gameplay, excellent touchscreen responsiveness, and thanks to that five and a half inch beautiful display, colors, and just the overall gameplay and multimedia experience, whether you're watching YouTube videos, playing games, or browsing the web, is going to be an amazing experience. And you're not gonna experience any lag or anything to disappoint or take away from this experience. But if I had to pick one, I would probably pick the Nexus 5 when it came to personal preference on my multimedia experience. And this is because the OnePlus One gets significantly hotter than the Nexus 5 when gaming or performing high powered task. The OnePlus One's 3100 milliamp battery definitely outperforms the Nexus 5's 2300 milliamp battery, but the problem is it's inconsistent. Despite what you're seeing on the screen right now, I'm relatively getting between three and a half to four and a half hours of on-screen time with the OnePlus One being off the charger anywhere between 12 to 16 hours. With the Nexus 5, I can be off the charger anywhere between 12 to 13 hours and have two and a half to three and a half hours of on-screen time. Although the OnePlus One definitely outperforms when it comes to battery life, I like the Nexus 5's consistency much better because I know when I'm gonna have to put it on the charger and I know how much time I'm gonna have left. But this is also just a personal preference because the 3100 milliamp battery definitely does outperform to 2300. So let's talk about software. The Google Nexus 5 is running the bare skin version of Android. This is exactly what Google wants you to experience and this is what Google's baby looks like. It's also running the latest version of Android, which is Android 4.4.3, which was just released recently last week or this week, depending on when I release this video. You can see it has some of the basic gestures such as swiping down with two fingers to access your quick toggles and swiping down with one to access your notification center. The menu is very simple and this is the way Android was supposed to be, very simplistic. And here's that version of Android that I was talking about previously and you can see proof it is running 4.4.3. And although Android is an open world or open market setup, you cannot customize too much with the bare skin of Google, but you can get a lot of third-party apps to allow customization. It's running the latest version of the Google Now launcher, so you're going to have quick access to Google Now other than holding down the home button and swiping up. And you can see here, here's a quick example again of your notification center. And if you swipe to the right on your notifications, you're going to be able to swipe them away. And we'll go ahead and pull that back up. Swiping to the left is going to give you your other home screen. And swiping back to the right will give you that quick action to Google Now. 
Google now gives you notifications on the fly, such as delivery notifications, flight notifications, or just some simple news. It's a very useful application or useful feature on the Google Now Launcher. I tend to use it daily. Now, when it comes to signage and mod, I've gone in through it a lot throughout my video, so I'm not gonna go through it too much in this video. Just know that it is full of customizations. It is the opposite of stock Android while maintaining that stock Android feel. When it comes to icons and just the overall look and fluidity of it, it's gonna be very, very similar to the stock launcher on the Nexus 5. In fact, I went ahead and uploaded or downloaded the Google Now launcher. So when you're seeing this video, you're gonna see the actual Google Now launcher. So when I swipe to the right, I'm going to have access to Google Now as well. Some of the gestures are also different on CyanogenMod. If you swipe down with two fingers, it gives you access to your quick toggle. Swiping down from the right also gives you that same access. Swiping down from the left corner gives you access to your notification center. You can see the interface on the settings app is also very similar to the stock Google with a whole bunch of added options. You have full control over your theme, full control over your buttons. You have the interface set up. There is a lot of customization that you can do with CyanogenMod. And the other key difference is the fact that this is not running the latest version of Android. It's only running 4.4.2, which is still not bad at all. There are also some other gestures that I did not show in this video, and that's drawing a circle to open the camera and drawing a V to get to the flashlight on the fly. You can do this with the screen off. The overall fluidity of these two devices is very, very similar. Although since CyanogenMod is basically a rooted or flashed ROM, it is going to experience minor hiccups here and there. But CyanogenMod has been very, very good at pushing out updates and they are perfecting their system very quickly. So let's talk about pricing and availability. The Nexus 5 is available today. You can get it in red, white, and black. 349 for the 16 gigabyte, 399 for the 32 gigabyte. It's GSM unlocked and it's available on AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint here in the United States. Now let's move on to the OnePlus One, which is a bit different. They go the invite only route, so it's not technically available for public release yet. And the model that you see here is actually a pre-production model. You can get it in white and sandstone black once released. $299 for the 16 gigabyte, $349 for the 64 gigabyte, also GSM unlocked, but only available on AT&T and T-Mobile here in the United States. So let's talk about camera. The rear camera on the Nexus 5 is an 8 megapixel shooter featuring optical image stabilization, single LED flash, and it's also capable of recording video in 1080p. I really do enjoy the actual camera app itself on the stock Google phones such as the Google Play editions and even the Nexus 4 and Nexus 5s. It's a very simple and very straightforward interface and you're not bombarded with a million options like you are on TouchWiz, LG, or even now the HTC phones. You can see here it features a timer, the grid mode, HDR, you can turn flash on to auto or just off, and of course you have access to your front facing camera. If you get out of all that and just swipe to the right, you're going to get access to your video camera, your camera, your lens blur option, your panorama mode, and your photosphere. The panorama and photosphere work excellent, although it depends on your lighting, the time of day, and if your subjects move. Going into the settings, you can see you have access to your video quality and image quality. You can change the megapixel count, and you can also reduce the video quality from 1080p to VGA and so forth. You can also change the megapixel count on the front facing camera and you can also change the image resolution for your panorama modes and things like that. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Nexus 5 camera. So let's go ahead and take a look at the OnePlus One camera and this is really where the OnePlus One stands out. It has a 13 megapixel shooter on the back with dual LED flash. It's capable of shooting video in 4K and 1080p, but not just regular 4K. It can shoot 4K UHD and 4K DCI. The camera app on the OnePlus One is also very simple and straightforward, but go into the settings and you have a ton of options. You can change the image quality from 13 megapixel all the way down to the very bottom, the same thing with your video quality. You have access to a time lapse, you have access to slow motion video recording, which you can do in 720p and 1080p, depending on the frames per second that you choose. You don't have access to a lens blur option like you do on the Nexus 5, but you have tons of different settings, shooting modes, and filters to choose from, and you can set them up to be accessed on the fly by scrolling up and down on the main camera screen. 
So let's go ahead and get you guys some sample images and video quality. Enjoy. And what's up everybody? So now the OnePlus One has a five megapixel front facing camera while the Nexus 5 only has a 1.2 megapixel camera on the front. So I'm just gonna do a quick test and this will be my closing of this full entire comparison between these two phones. And from the looks of it, from what I see, the OnePlus One is far superior and image quality with these front facing cameras and that's to be expected considering it has a 5 megapixel shooter rather than a 1.2 megapixel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and in case you didn't notice the image quality on the OnePlus One versus the Nexus 5 is a bit surprising considering the OnePlus One does have a better rear facing camera it still shows that the Nexus 5 has an excellent camera as well and can perform better than even a 13 megapixel camera.
So again, guys, I hope you liked the video. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, follow me on all my social media networks, and make sure you stay tuned. There'll be more one plus one coverage coming. Leave me a comment in the section below. And of course, as always, guys, thank you for watching and all of your support.